I do believe we are live. We are live, indeed. Since we finally have the whole cast, the whole kit and caboodle together, uh, I think we should go around and do uh, just a once-over once introduction. Um, unfortunately, uh, Theta Ractus had an incident with his, uh, his headset uh, last... I think it was Sunday or I can't remember exactly when, but he had an incident and his headset broke and he ordered a new headset and they're bunk. So we're mainly going to be operating off of uh, interpretive dance, uh, hand signals, um, and uh, a little bit of text uh, to, to hear what his character is sharing. So uh, all, uh, my name's Eli. I'm the dungeon master. Uh, we'll start with. Uh, Dennis. I'm Dennis, and my character is Eric the Barbarian, and uh, I'm ready to kick Eric some ass. Eric the Barbarian? Eric? Yeah. Eric. 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 Yeah, you got it. Just making sure you're awake, you know, since you've been up since yeah, yeah, yeah. four. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... uh, up next is Griffin. Hey there, I'm playing uh, Whirlin, the Elven Thief. Mage Thief, even. Not that he's cast any spells or <laughs> has any that's useful. Uh, as it tends to be. Uh, going down the line, we got Chrissy Joe. Hello, I'm Chrissy Joe. Uh, I am playing Finn, the halfling thief who loves cheese, but cheese does not love her, apparently. All right, uh, then we got down the line, lessons learned. All right, um, I'm playing Orwell Kill, uh, a half half goblin, grumpy looking old man. Well, he's actually not old, he's just white haired. Did, did you say did you say grumpy or gropey? Uh, my head, no, no, grumpy, grumpy. No, okay. okay, see, yeah, uh, just... being gropey gets your hands caught very quickly, uh-huh. so yeah. Uh, right. Not without permission, at least. Um, and uh, yeah, and he loves to loves to shoot uh, bows into enemies, regardless of who happens to be nearby. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, that didn't end up well last time, as I believe Eric got uh, got hit by an arrow in the last fight you all had. Uh, and uh, last up, we got Lunella. Hey, I am Lunella. I'm playing Elka the Bear. Uh, she's a little weird. She likes torture. She wants to be a knight, and she uses a morning star. That's. I'll let those dots connect. <laughs> All right. So last session we had the 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 party just got done with a decent healing. Uh, everyone's feeling just a little bit better. Um, you guys decided to head down to the town of you know are you holding down in your push to talk oh oops i don't have it on push to talk hold on you also just push up the mic um you guys decided to head down to Bijoff and uh, try to find the suspected location of uh, the the next uh, of w- one of these these strange locations, um, and you had a mixed reception at Bijoff. You found a body. Um, it 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 went poorly, and so you guys went south to the town of Akak. Uh, you you got down. Uh, you got close to Akak, and you discovered a. Uh, a, a young boy who was who was disheveled, hungry, and 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 slightly injured. Looked like he had he had ran, and he said that his town was taken over by bandits. Um, then and, and he and some some other children were taken hostage. Um, and that the the village needed your help. Um, and that he was sure that the bandits had loads of treasure. Uh, that the village could reward you with. So you guys arrived in the village of Akak. Uh, it, rather kind of evening-ish, and you did a little did a little scouting via Whirlin, and Whirlin confirmed that there was something fishy going on in town. 
the, he noticed that there were some people that did look a little bit rough and tumble and seemed to be in charge. Um, he saw five of them in the main village. Um, and then he went down to here on the map, which was an old abandoned castle. And he, that seemed to be the, the bandit hideout. Uh, so he came back and he also, uh, at the very top of the map, uh, with the, the section of the town that's outside the village, he also saw what looked like a house that had recently been burned down. Um, and so that's when he, he had regrouped with all of you and, and filled you in on, uh, on what he saw. The plan that you guys had went over last time was you were going to wait until nightfall and then attack the village here and take out the bandits that you found there. Uh, just confirming, is there anything else I missed out on? Nope. I think this is all about right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the... <clears throat> the first question I have is you're waiting until nightfall, so the town is is relatively dark aside from the what what light you have from from the moon. Uh are any of you guys going to use torches? I know Karamikos probably wants a torch of some kind. Uh given that we're trying to do like a stealthy operation here, the answer is probably going to end up being no, we just have to rely on moonlight. And that's and that's totally uh, totally an option. Just remember that there are penalties for being in darkness and in in uh, dim light as well. So mm -hmm. so we'll we'll rotate on. I've got a battle map of the the, the local vicinity around this village here. Uh, nighttime has just fallen, and you guys can place yourselves right here. Hey, there I am. Can't see anything. You have to place your token first, and then you'll see stuff. I believe you'll see... You can see drawings, even though you... Can you see drawings in the darkness? Nope. I can, so it's all working for me, at least. I'm seeing a, a good bit. <clears throat> Giant egg. I, All right, does everyone yeah, see am. down here? Yeah. Can anyone not see? Just double checking. Oh, everyone sounds good. So it, there are. Yeah, Karamikos, you should. Uh, yeah, that 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 should be what you can see uh, based off your your nighttime vision. So, at the, can everyone see? I can. I can see. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yep. I don't know how that's supposed to work. It was supposed to only reveal light for Karamikos, but it seems to have revealed the darkness for everyone. Um, I can see down past the scarecrow. Yeah, yeah, everyone should. Yeah. I think you guys can see everything. Um, um, and that'll, that'll probably work better if everything's in darkness then until you guys start using light, um, it's probably actually a better idea to just reveal everything. So, um, so I'll, I'll turn daylight mode on just because that way you get, cause if everyone's in darkness, then, uh, everyone has the same, the same penalties essentially. Right. So this, this is the village down here. Uh, you know, there's, there's one building here that has several bandits from world in search, uh, a building here, and then two buildings on the bottom of the map that also have bandits residing in them. So. What would you like to do? Here I can I can draw arrows to the ones that have bandits in them. There we go. <clears throat> 
All right. Well, don't let anyone speak up immediately about a plan or anything. Yeah, yeah no one. Yeah. Need. No need. Wait, um, how did we get here? I don't remember the last few days. What's going on? It's all right. <laughs> it's been in a bit of a cheese days again. Short to say, we decided to go check out and see if we could find an additional tome. Uh, but we didn't find one, so we went further south. What was our genius plan again? Uh, I suppose our genius plan right now is to ambush them in the middle of the night and maybe use the fact we have a few more bows than they seem to. Right. Yeah, the plan, uh, the last time I heard a lot of talk about bows and uh, a, a, a talk of attacking the town at night. Right. We've mm -hmm. got some sleeping bandits inside of these buildings. Is Is anyone patrolling? Yeah, good question. It does not appear so. Mm. Well, Ixnay on the bow, huh? Yeah. Well, here's Damn where it. a simple plan could uh, come into play. I could go forward and attempt to cause a distraction. They will come outside towards the distraction and into your line of sight. good idea. I can also help cause a distraction if you need another. Get more than that, you? How many seconds do you need to um, um, aim for your shot? Four seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, Elka, you have a torch, right? Um, I don't think so. Hold on. I've got torches. No. Uh, are you thinking of setting up this uh, scarecrow on fire? Uh, well, I think just lighting the torch would be enough uh, to lure them towards it. Good and point. along with the sound to alert them to it, they'll go outside, see the light, and go to investigate, perhaps. Well, yeah, we could throw a torch or something. Well, maybe not. Yeah, it's a I was thinking it's a good idea. Set, set up the scarecrow on fire. They rush yeah. out to see what Dude, it is. Yeah. They will be a, they will be in the area of the light, and we can pick them off from here. Or different. Exactly. Places. Whoever's good at sneaking could go and do that, and then we'll I can stay back and be ready. Yes, I will. I suppose I will do so. Wasn't the halfling good at sneaking? I'm pretty good at sneaking around. Fourteen. Uh, but yes, I can. I can try to set up the uh, the distraction. Okay. Uh, just have to choose where. What's well, actually a good range for you? Like, do you have a, a distance you like? Well, why don't we spread out mm. in the bush? You know, like uh, I'll come Someone. over here. Someone here, someone over here, maybe yeah. someone here, yeah. Because I think my range is 150. Which is why I say we set this on fire, then, you know, they'll come to see what it is and get to Yeah, I agree with that. Maybe put somebody here, see where my ping is. Also, maybe like don't burn the villagers' crops, too, while we're at it, but... Oh, those are, they're not going to burn. It's just gonna be the scarecrow. Those are what? Pumpkins, I think. Cords. <laughs> something, something. They're uh, the famous northern pumpkin. Squash. Okay. Squash. Also, tends if you stand very close to fire, you get kind of blinds you too. That helps. I call that I'm gonna die tonight. Just so everybody knows. No fair. I was supposed to be the first one to die. I've been trying for weeks. Yeah. Nope. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm happy to help Whirlin with uh, with whatever. I'm fairly sneaky myself. I mean, if you can, if there's something else we can also set on fire that won't set the village on fire as a second distraction to keep them running around, that'd be good. 
We need to move. Well, she could go for Do the scarecrow, and multiple? I could go for like this area here. I can back, back up, Eric. So. Um. Now. Because I don't know how much I will. I'm happy to light something on fire, and then I'm gonna back up a bit because I have a terrible aim. As poor Whirlin has has found out. Oh. Well, somebody could hide in the in the trees or the bushes down here from where the red arrows are, so you can come up, sneak up behind them, and like stab them or something. I can absolutely do that. Does my um, was it the natural hiding thing? Would that help with that, Eli? That that would apply when you're out in this this natural setting. Your your uh, your hide in natural. Uh, settings mm -hmm. would apply. So that would give you a plus 50 to your sneaking. Cool. So yeah, I could set the scarecrow on fire and then duck down or vice versa, Whirlin, whichever one, since I know you're down. Right. Uh, uh, you can handle the scarecrow then and I'll handle another location. We'll probably end up just lighting this area up so that uh, as soon as they approach us, we'll see them. Uh, yeah, because if you're if you're behind the fire and, and their silhouette steps into the towards the fire, you'll be able to see them. So anybody that has doesn't doesn't have low light should be able to, you know, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have that penalty, or I would think. But yeah, Karamikos is pointing out that he's not very stealthy, but he's also going to stop anyone from sneaking up on you guys. Very true. I'll get ready to ambush, I guess, once they come out. All right. So is, is everyone is everyone set on what you guys want to do? Yeah. Yep. All right, so one position. time, each one okay, of you I'll, run I'll, through. I'll, I'll one, what, question. one question. Yeah. Can I unlimber my club and put it on the floor, on the ground? So if yeah. I need to drop my ball and grab my club, then it's ready to go? Uh, mechanically, there's no, there's no need to... To, to do, do that because uh, okay. it's it's going to be the same draw time um to pick it up as it is to draw your weapon well then yeah. um if it was a if it was a weapon like a like a, a bigger weapon so like if you had a large side weapon and if you're mm -hmm. pre preparing it like that i'd probably i'd probably give you a, a a speed discount to ready it um okay. but with a medium weapon it should be just as quick okay Let's get ready to rumble. All right, so run, running they... through what what you guys are going to do. Uh, Dennis, what are you doing? How is your character ready for this? Just kind of give me a general description of what your character is doing, what you have out. Which... Okay, so my character is going to be in the brush up here. Um, I don't know if I can, if I can paint. Yep, I, I see you up there at the top. Okay, and I'm going to have the bow at the ready, aiming for whoever's going to come in to you know, this general area, right? Because I got a max range of like 150, so. Okay, so you have your bow out. Yeah, I got my All bow right. out and I'm aiming and I'm ready and yeah. All right. Uh, Elka, I'm, I'm just going by by positioning on where you are on the map. Uh, I how, how are you prepared? I figured um, I've got my morning star out um, and I'm ready to like go ambush some guys of what for whatever reason they get near Eric. Okay. All right. So your your plan is just to, uh, just you know, you're you're the the counter attack with with a melee weapon. Uh, Karamiko uh, has his sword and his uh, his shield out uh, in the back there, doing something similar with uh, with Elk of the Bear. Uh, if you if if astute members will notice, he's dropped his usual distance of 120 feet down down to a measly only 12. So you know, if if need be, I can add uh, some extra distance. Um, uh, up up there to the the top. All because we can't hear him. Uh, exactly. Um, Orbal kill. Uh, you've you've described that you have your have some arrows out on the ground. Uh, you have your Go bow out, out, I assume. Ready, knocked and ready and aiming. Usually on right. this general area. Right. Okay. And yeah, uh, arrows, uh, how big are the gourds? That are in this garden. Um, are are gourds a spring vegetable? Fall. 
I don't know much about. I have Gore no Jet. idea. I picture them more as I, I believe they are more of a fall, um, unless they're something like zucchinis. But I'm not an expert on squash, <laughs> so I'm going to say something like, yeah, the small. I'm just small wondering to maybe one if, or two medium size. I'm wondering if my three foot self could duck behind one of those uh, after lighting the scarecrow. If there's maybe a larger one that I could crouch down and hide behind. And if the that's natural, so with the natural surroundings, would that come into play if I ducked behind a... And I am oh, round, so basically yeah, yeah. I look like a pumpkin. Yeah, that, uh, that that's a good argument. I'll say that there is enough pumpkins and there's enough... Uh, dirt, you can even kind of clear out a little spot so you're prepared to duck behind there. Um, definitely gives you uh, something to work with if luck of, if luck comes into the uh, the, the situation there. Um, and oh, Roland, if only I had any luck points left. Oh, right. Are you completely out of luck? Ooh, dangerous. Yeah, because I had to, I saved my ass last time, so no luck. So yeah, I, I'm going to oh, be trying my best <laughs> that's why i'm kind of like i may not i may let you guys try to fight and i'm gonna try to scurry my little round butt out once i help all right and whirlin uh i'm going to light a torch leave it on the ground i'm going to throw a rock over at this door and then I'm going to retreat to this tree and hide. All right. So that's that's your 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 you're the active part of this plan. So we'll we'll start. Uh, so the, there's been some questions about Kermikos about the the lighting of this condition. Um, I'm going to say the village is a little bit of a, a it's a, in the middle of the clearing, and there is good light tonight. So in inside the village and uh, inside this area it's going to be dim light so someone that has low light vision um and obviously karamikos has uh what he's going on um but anyone with low light vision so i believe that'll be both the uh both eric eric and uh, orbel since you have low light vision you're not going to have any penalties um in in this dim light uh, but for all the humans uh, that's where you're going to be having uh, the minus four to attack and minus two defense. But once you get into the canopy and the forest around, then that's when you have some of the the, the darkening elements of the trees. So kind of outside the the village, that's when you have actual darkness um, under under those trees. So that's that's how I'm going to rule that. Okay. Um, I'm so also going to say who had the who had the torch because whoever that is, I'm going to have gotten that and the flint and whatever to light it from them before I move away from them. Just to, just to make sure that's said. So I actually have something to light the sky, scarecrow with. All right. So Whirlin did have the torch, but you did mention something about dropping it near where you were. Are, do you still want to take the torch then, or are you going to give it to Finn? Or is there something else that I can light? Do we have something else that I can light so that we can have the fires in the two locations? Well, I can give you a torch. I mean, it's... Cool. Then I'll do that. I'll take a torch from Eric. Okay. All right, so as the moving element of the plan, uh, Whirlin, what are you doing? Doing just as I said. Darkness. It's, it's all dark. The village is quiet. Um, you might see a little bit of a glow from some of the fires as smoke gently rises into the air. It's it's peaceful. Yep. No, I imagine wrong. there's like a small amount of ambient noise going on, and I'm going to disturb a bit of that. I'm going to take the torch first. I'm just going to take the bottom part of it and just stab it into the ground a little bit. Just get it standing up. And where then you, uh, Just where, where your character is right there? Yes, right where I am. All right. I'm just going to drop a torch uh, there. Good idea. Since uh, we don't have darkness on the map, since everything was dark, I'm going to drop uh, uh, <clears throat> two different auras on this. Uh, it's going to be orange or red for bright light and then orange for dim light. 
uh, that that everyone should be able to see now. So that's what that torch will do. Okay. Wow. That's actually yeah, a huge radius. Because it's a it's a thirty foot uh, radius of dim light, and then sixty feet of of bad light. Okay. Uh, so I've taken the torch. I've stabbed into the ground. Uh, then I'm taking That's my. That's really going to light everybody up. <laughs> yep. Then I'm going to take my rock. And I'm just going to throw it at this wall. As soon as I hear the rock hit, then I'll light the scarecrow. Okay. Well. So you you toss out this this rock. Um, We'll we'll say that you know because there's there's not really any time element to it the torch will stay lit for a while. Uh, you you throw you you know we'll say the first rock works. So eventually a, the a rock would. Um, and you you toss it out and it hits hits against the wall hits against the uh, hits against a, one of the walls or or the or door and makes kind of a loud thunk. And let me see if anything happens. I'm really struggling to type today. So you you throw this rock against that that building and nothing, no response. Uh, not even like the sound of people like shuffling around. Yeah, it it, it thunks against the side of the building, and uh, the, you know maybe you hear a little bit of rustling, but no one emerges from that building. Okay. Uh so as long as that's happening, um no one's emerging. I'll probably just try to sneak a little closer over here for a second. Yeah, you you make and... it all the way to there and uh make it make a listening check. Let's do it. Check. Yeah, you're You've you've thrown a rock against the wall. You've, you're listening, and no response. It doesn't seem like anyone is, you know, either awake or they didn't respond to your, uh, the the rock hitting the hitting the building. Hmm. Okay. Uh. So I guess it's up to me. I'm going to go ahead and keep sneaking closer. Uh. All right. I don't know if there's a front door here or not. Or back door. Uh, you're not seeing a door on this side, but you remember from going through the village, <clears> the door is <throat> on the front side, uh, on the uh, the like the road side of the the building. Right, and I'm gonna say there's probably not windows because medieval construction in villages. But uh, are there like any shutters? Uh, there are shutters also on the front side of this building. Okay. Everything on this building is on the front. Right. So so far, it seems like there's just nobody out here. Yeah, it's all, not it's really all, hearing all anything. What you're hearing mainly is the the this village has a large number of pigs kept around it, and it's uh it's it's all <clears throat> it's all oinking and you know, no nothing out of the ordinary. Hearing okay. some snoring coming from a different building. So here's the front, and now we're at the shutters. I could probably try to get a peek inside of some kind. Yeah, you're you're standing by. Oh, that's. Um, you're standing by the uh, the the door right there next to you, and here are those two sets of shutters, and you 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 peer in and. Uh, it looks like you, what, what you can see is from the uh, the there's a a fireplace opposite you, and from the from the light there, there's still a few logs that are slightly burning. Uh, there appears to be uh, two male males that look like the bandits you saw before. One with the the, the large one with the staff, and uh, another that you you know just another one of those that you pegged out to be a, a rough and unruly type uh both of them have their heads down and they're snoring uh 
sitting at a large table. Uh, you see several ales uh, placed there. Some knocked over. A little bit of food left from their dinner. All right. That's why they didn't react, because they're dead drunk and completely passed out. Okay. <clears throat> well, now's the time for me to improv something as the thief. Uh, so these are basic village doors uh, and shutters. I should be able to break in quietly. I actually have lock picking if that actually comes up. I guess it's a yeah, question. It's you can open up this door with a with a lock picking check because it's really just a latch. It's just an easy check. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it's a, yeah, it's a standard check, not opposed. Uh, it's easy. If you fail, it's probably going to have negative effects, but it'll probably still get the door open. Okay, let's give it a try. All right, so you wanted to, it's an easy check. You wanted to get within 80. You have a skill of 22. So there, unless you had rolled a fumble, there's not really much of a chance to fail. And mm -hmm. you slide in your one of your knives and lift up the latch. All right. So let's take a peek inside. Oh, uh, I accidentally backed out of the map. So <laughs> just take a second to get in. Good job. Well, I guess while we're just talking then, uh, so there's the guy with the staff and then the person he was with, right? Yes, that's correct. Those uh, look like <clears throat> only two uh, in this room. So the door should now be open. So, uh, right there. Uh, oh, yeah, there we are. Yep, so you peek in and you see the two of them. Um, sitting here, the glow of the fire here, and what looks like stairs going up to the second floor of this building. Interesting. All right. I mean, he seems like he's passed out, and I can't seem to see anything that uh, is contrary to that, really. So I'll go ahead, and I'll try actually sneaking in to get up to him. And I have a sword and dagger in my hands. All right, so the first thing I'm going to need you to do is I need you to make an opposed sneaking check against the two of them uh, as you as you move forward into position. All right, let's hit opposed, and let's go find sneaking. My best skill. Let's see how terribly I do. Okay, we got a 104 for the opposition. Already All right. looking a little bit dicey for him. So you got a hundred and four. So they the rolls will be out in op out the in the open. Um, you do have a bonus uh, because they are in a slumber. So effectively, you do have a one forty four. Mm -hmm. And so the two of them are a uh, forty three and. A thirty. So you you're you're not gonna they're not gonna hear your sound as you walk up and, and approach to uh try to awake them. So you now have the chance that, that you're you're standing over these bodies, what would you like to do? Well, we, as far as we know, they are bandits, uh cowing the village, and this is the leader, and he's right here asleep, and I have a knife. I didn't have a six finger for that. Um <clears throat> So I think it's time to go ahead and get use out of this backstab ability. Uh, which right. is where I tried so, to murder him in his sleep. <laughs> so th there's there's two different options that you have. You can just go to, to stab him, or you also have coup de gras, because he is helpless. So okay. from, with, with your abilities. Um, right. And I one think of them, a... if, mm -hmm. if you go to coup de gras, it would be a instant kill. But he just has to make a check to to see if like your touch as you as you wake him up would uh, would would wake him up. And if he does, then it's basically like you tried to initiate combat, and then combat would start. Um, if you just go for the stab, then combat would start from that stab. Um, and because you stab him, he would he would and he's sleeping, so he would have a penalty to his initiative. Um, but that would initiate combat. It's it's up to you. Mm -hmm. 
I just want to make sure you know how the game handles these sort of situations. Do some okay. damage, but not guarantee that he's dead, or try to go for the guaranteed kill, but if he don't... Oops. Right, and uh, I think as a thief, I coup de girl faster as well, so that that's definitely correct. an option. Um, You know, talking to a villager probably would have been good at some point, Uh. But I'm already here. We already have a plan, and we already want to murder them. So I guess I'm gonna just go through with it. It seems like this is the right thing to do. So uh, let's coup de gras them. All right. So uh, the coup de gras has some some fun stuff. So what's what's gonna happen is the first thing is you have to when when someone's sleeping, uh, it, there's an added one d twelve exclamation p of of time that you're basically. Uh, like you have to adjust them in their sleeping so you can expose their their throat and get the finishing kill. So I'm gonna roll. Uh, I'll roll secretly and uh, mm -hmm. see how much time that is. Yeah, and then we'll see what the rogue stuff does for specifically that. All right, and. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll to see if your touch starts to awaken him. Uh, would you like to roll the the opposed dice against this, or uh, would you like me to just roll oh. it all in secret? I could dispatch helpless opponents in three seconds. Most other characters require ten. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll roll it. Uh, you said one d twelve, or so. Yeah, this is this is a one d twenty plus four. The the person that you went over against is is someone who has a light slumber, um, and when you're when you're touching him, it's going to it's it's a physical touch, it and it and adjusts him, and it's going to make a little bit of noise, so he has a little bit of modifiers there, um, and he also is going to add his wisdom. All right, so he's posing an eighteen, then I believe. Yep, um, and he's got a plus eight. He got an eleven. So you you touch him and you or yeah, describe what happens. You you come up on him and you see he's kind of got his his head and his his arms and he's, he's yeah. And I'm just coming forward. I have a, I have the dagger in one hand. I'm just like slowly easing around him with the knife until it's like right across his neck. <clears throat> All right. So uh, you 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 adjust him over and turn him over and he doesn't awake. He kind of mumbles a little bit and you slit his throat and he is dead. All right. What would you like to do? Good start. Um, I think he's the only one in here or this is the only uh, person I was aware of was in here, right? No, there's somebody. Do you not see the other person on the map? No, no, I meant like of of the bandits. Like it just he was in this house with this person, and that's all that I. Uh, you remember, believe right? that the two of them were both bandits? Oh, both of them are. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I thought this was like probably the mayor because that was the way you described it last time, or something. Yeah, he or... was following the mayor all around, um, and that is something that you noticed. But you also saw that there was another bandit that. Look, it looked like they were pulling double duty on this house. Uh, I'm just trying to like picture who who I remember and which roles they were in. The staff guy was walking with someone, and that yep. someone is just another bandit. He wasn't actually important. You did see the mayor. The mayor. He was. It looked like the guy with the staff was okay, following so... the mayor. But okay, so... there was another bandit that was also at that house. All right. So this guy isn't the mayor. No, this guy's not the mayor. He's he's just a bandit. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll do the same thing. All right. So, uh, can you give me another sneaking check as you as you cross that gap? Um, I'll I'll factor in the the sleeping modifier to to my roll as it's okay. opposed. Seventy four. All right, you got a, he's got a pretty good chance. You've got a pretty good chance here, and and sure enough, you cross that gap. Um, you're gonna have to roll to see if this guy wakes up when you touch him. So, uh, if you don't mind, you can roll that another d20 plus four. 
22. This is going to be very tough Ooh, for him. That's going to be very <laughs> tough for him. Uh, randomly, this guy had a little bit of better wisdom. Uh, he had uh, better, th better than Horace. Uh, so he has a little bit better of a chance, but it's still tough. And he only gets a 20. Uh, can you... Uh, you don't you don't worry, have to worry about that coup de gras time, and you adjust him over and kill him as well. Very good. Uh, and for good measure, I'll go ahead and I'll put out the fire. <laughs> All right, that's very kind of you. Uh, you 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 stomp it out. Uh, I might be a murderer, but I care about fire safety now. There's nobody around to watch it. <laughs> But yeah, I'll do that, extinguish the light, and uh, slip back out of the house. All right. So we have a few more buildings to go through then. Uh, I'm trying do. to remember. There's, I there's think the other, other arrow was pointed at this one. That's correct. Yeah, so I guess uh, I'm just slowly going down. I see my own light. No one's outside on duty, and I suppose I'm really just listening right now. <clears throat> yeah, you're not seeing anyone uh, anyone come out. Uh, to seems like a quiet, norm a normal, quiet night. Yeah, right, you're now so seeing the, next... the arrows. There's one pointing here. There's one pointing towards this building, and there's one pointing to the building to your right. Uh oh, to the building to the right. That was this one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and approach that one next. So we got another door situation. So I'm going to take a peek. All right. Uh, take a take a peek in. Um, you you look into this build this room. Uh, roll an observation check for me. Post. Uh. Actually, no, a listening check would be better. Uh, roll a listening check. Uh, this one will be opposed. Okay, listening check. 54. Not, not fantastic. All right, uh, it's, he's, he's got a modifier because he's not trying to be stealthy. It's just kind of his, his passive, uh, you know, he's just sitting there. Uh, from in, in here, you look in, you see what looks like a, a small fire in the center of the room uh, that's that's lightly crackling as well. And as you're you're standing at this door, you you hear what sounds like the a scrape of of metal against a wood surface. Mm -hmm. And then you <clears throat> there's a there's a a, a a moment of silence, and then a and then a a thud. And then Ooh. there's there's a pause, and you hear uh, a scraping sound. Uh, pause, and then more scraping. Sounds like a some sort of blade on wood. Right, someone someone's sharpening something, or maybe just whittling. Ah, uh, but if this is the bandit, um. I could either A, move along and try to find someone else who's also asleep and take them out first, or start the distraction and get these guys going in. There were five of them. Uh, plus the boss or with the boss, right? Uh, plus <clears throat> the boss. So probably a, a total of six. So, so we're down to four now. This is one of them. Do I feel that we should do a four on us fight? No, 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 no. The five, 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 five was, five was correct. Five okay, was so correct. Three of them left. Okay, I feel better about this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do something very silly. I'm going to go ahead and lightly knock on this door, and then I will hide around this corner. Okay. So you you knock, you hear a, huh? Uh. <clears throat> you hear uh, the sound of uh, someone getting up from a chair and, and kind of the, the scrape of a bench and then footsteps and the as the door opens up and you see a, a head poke out and, and look around. Uh, if anything, I'm hoping he notices the light. Uh, let's roll. Uh, 
<laughs> let's roll a listening check for him. Uh, he has he's or no, not not listening. An observation check. Uh, a twenty nine. It's it's enough that he should notice the light. Um, and he he steps around the corner here and 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 sees the torch. Uh, what is what is everyone doing? You see this. You see this guy step out. Uh, kind of look around and throw his hand up and and look around and see this torch. What are you all doing? I'm aiming. If if I see him, the last I knew of the plan was to light the scarecrow on fire. So I'm gonna light the scarecrow on fire. All right. So you're 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 taking a torch to the 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 scarecrow. Um, you were prepared for this, so give me a one d four initiative roll for for you. Or actually, you know, you you have a, a one initiative dice less, don't you? As a halfling. I, I believe think you so. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, or maybe you get that from. What level are you, Finn? For level, you're level one. Yeah, I'm still level one. Okay, they they do have an initiative bonus, so you're gonna actually roll a D3 for initiative. So you you get a you get a three there. So this guy's kind of stepped around the corner. He's uh, he's looking around and. You see, he sees the the torch. He makes it. Uh, let's see, twenty. This is three seconds, so fifty. He makes it about fifteen feet as he's just walking forward. Um, before you've got the tor- the 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 scarecrow lit on fire, the scarecrow lights on fire, and we we now move to second. This would be a, a second four of if if we're kind of in in this initiative, and the scarecrow's lit on fire. Orbel, you said you were aiming. Do you want to take that shot? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, roll a roll a d t- roll your roll your attack. Uh, I'm gonna say he's. You've got a second where he's kind of flabbergasted and he stops. And you can make. Uh, well, actually, let's uh, let's throw everyone on the initiative tracker uh, at this point. Okay. Let me highlight my. Well, we gotta roll. I need to roll another initiative. Is this a different initiative? Um, you're going to stay on zero because we'll say this is the starting second of uh, this is when the, the shot goes off for Orbel. You've lit the scarecrow on fire um, mm-hmm. as as he's moving forward. And he's also going to be, you know, he'll, he'll have to roll initiative off of this second. What, um, die, die D3, I guess? You're not going to have to roll. You you oh, This okay. is this is you guys springing an ambush situation. So, um Elk, uh, uh, so yeah, everyone, all of you will just be on second zero, so you guys can just act. Uh, I don't have so, any, I don't have any modifiers because uh, of attacking an ambush and like that, right? You just simply can't react. Uh, to- yep, yeah, there, there's no modifiers, and because you have, he is in light, but you're also you have low light vision, so there's no penalties for for firing into the darkness. So aiming bonus. Uh, there's no aiming bonus. There's just not a penalty for snapshotting. No, but I was aiming. Did I don't get an aiming bonus? Nope, nope. There's no bonus there. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna say he's he's kind of stopped for a second and 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 looking at this scarecrow. Um, here's his initiative. Uh, that's a or not initiative. Here's his defense roll. That's an 11. You've got a 19. Roll some damage. All right, that's eight points of damage on this fella. Uh, he does have a little bit of armor, but he is uh, he is not threshold of pain. Um, can I have you roll a d20 and add your morale modifier? So it's a plus one. All right, so you've hit him with an arrow uh, out of the middle of the darkness. And that's what you're doing on second zero. So on um, on second uh, zero, Whirlin, what are you doing? 
Uh, as far as I'm aware, it sounds like he was going to investigate. My part of the plan is done right now, and I'm going to try keeping an eye out for other people. I'm going to go ahead and start moving this way pretty slowly, so I'm just going to advance like myself to four seconds. Okay, so uh, you're just going to move over there. <clears throat> you're advancing four seconds. You're just moving at, um, you're moving at a decent clip. Uh, yep. Finn, you set this on fire, so you just hit done for for this second. Okay. And uh, Orbel, you shot on this second. So Elka, you're sitting in here. Uh, you're 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 in the darkness, but you're looking out, and you see this light. Uh, you saw someone walk in on the far side of the light, uh, silhouetted against this building, and you heard the twang of a bowstring and a uh, a grunt. What are you going to do? And I hear this action coming from the other side of the light. Yeah, you you see it over uh, over here. Okay. Um. I'm going to go around the scarecrow from the back. All right, so you can start at a walk or a jog, so you can either move five or ten feet. Yep. Were you able to do that? Yep. Perfect. Um, do you? And then you hit done. Awesome, Eric. Uh, you've got your you've got your bow ready. Uh, you've just seen him walk out, so you do have one second of time. You could have I would have said you could have acted on second uh, negative one. Uh, okay. I assume you're aiming. Yep. Uh, do you have yeah, any no. speed modifiers on your uh, your I don't your short bow? So this I would do. this would take you four seconds to fire. Um, okay. And so you've already well, you, he walked into your view one second but before so if you delay three seconds you'll be able to fire all right all right uh elk of the bear back to you that's all uh orbital kel you fired what would you like to do uh do fire next again. fire again all right so um you can delay your your bow's rate of fire so that'll be 11 seconds if you don't want to uh if you don't want to aim you can take off three of those seconds um and the reason why aiming takes four seconds for eric and three seconds for you is because every i think it's either either every second or every third speed modifier for a for a ranged weapon gives you one second off your aim time so a total of 14. I delay for 14, correct? Uh, so the, that, that is built into the, the weapon speed of... Uh, that's already built into the weapon speed. Okay. So like that 11 seconds represents 8 seconds of other things and then the, 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 the speed of, of you firing as well. Okay. Or, or the, the speed of you aiming as well. Okay, I'm going to aim. Yeah. Um, yeah, like uh, like Theta said earlier in, in our little text chat, um, aiming is something that's built in standard to all the the ranged uh, ranged combats, and so firing quicker uh, it actually gives you the the penalty there. Okay, I'm just gonna delay. Um, I just click click delay and yep. at, and go to 14, correct? Uh, you, yeah, you can hit, or you can hit. Yeah, if you hit delay, you just enter 11, and that's all you need. Okay. Should Theta be on the initiative? Um, he should be. Um, no, yeah, you're 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 on here, uh, Theta. I I just forgot to add you. Um, so uh, let's go with uh with Finn. You've just set this scarecrow on fire above you. And uh, what would you like to do? You saw this this fire. Uh, what would you like to do? I'm just backing up and ducking down and hiding and just letting everybody else take, uh, you know, take their shots. But I just want to be out of the. I want to stay behind the scarecrow so that he doesn't see me and just kind of hide right there. Okay, so you're just you're just taking cover right there. Um, you can delay as long as you want. 
uh, since essentially you're just you're just hiding and, and waiting for other things to happen. So whenever you want to act, just let me know, okay? Okay. Do you want me to just throw a number in, in here? Yeah, throw a number in there. So that was second. This is second one, Karamikos. If you'd like to move, you're more than welcome to. All right. Uh, perfect. Um, and then it looks like it'll. With the initiative tracker tick when it the way it ticks down, it'll probably give Karamikos another turn if Karamikos hits done. All right, and then uh Karamikos can move and it looks like Elka will be the next one up as well who can move on this second. Uh both of you guys are are just taking movement actions. Uh so I'll describe what, what this fella here, uh who, who the initiative tracker names as Nojus. Uh, but no, just down here, uh, he gets hit by this arrow and he, he staggers um, and he, he, he fumbles down and uh, you see him him draw a club from his his belt. Um, and as he does so, he's going to uh, to to jog back, um, kind of kind of scampering, falling backwards, uh, trying to get some cover behind this nearby building uh, on, on his initiative two or on his second two. Um, Elko, did you move? Uh, your mic was up, so no one heard that, except for me. All right, I'm just lagging in roll twenty. Okay. Um, so his turn is done. Uh, on on second three, uh, he you you see him look out and 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 peer into the 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 darkness, and he, he hollers, uh, "Who who all's out there? What you want from us?" Elka. Okay. And uh, Karamikos, I assume, also advancing. Uh, the third step is run, so that would be 15 feet. Can you accelerate to 20 after that? Yeah, it'd be 20 with uh, sprinting. Yeah. And there's no nothing after that. You go uh, flat. You need to make sure to hit done, <laughs> Katamikos. And Eric, your bow is ready, but he's stepped back out of range. Um, or at least he's he's kind of got cover behind this building. What would you like to do, Eric? Um, I'm going to pull it back or untwang it, I guess, and move. Okay. So a jog, I can do 10 feet, right? Yep. Uh, and what, just delay a second? Uh, that'd be correct. And then uh, next up on second four is also Eric again. And then Karamikos and Elka. I'm going to move another 10 feet.
This is a building right here, right? Uh, that is a building right there in front of you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Elka the bear, you can also move. Um, and this fella is going to move as well. He moves around in the darkness. <laughs> and Whirlin, you're you're in uh, in a little bit of the dark there. You've you've moved into the 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 side of the trees. You've as 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 Nohas runs back, you can hear him start to start to yell. Uh, Help! Uh, we got we got trouble, boys! Wake up! Uh, well, I don't see him in my line of sight. I was expecting maybe if someone came this way. So I'm going to stay here and see who comes this way. I'm hiding basically behind the tree or in the bush or whatever this is exactly. So I've gone ahead and delayed. All right. Uh, so I'm just doing some some rolls in the, the, the background. Um, and... Uh, no hoss uh, run moves into a run at this speed, uh, going down, you know, move, moving in between <laughs> some of the buildings. Um, I guess, yeah, he'd 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 jaw, yeah, he'd run there. And uh, Elka moving through the light. Uh, Karamikos? 